I've been shooting at Lester Prairie Gun Club since we opened back 50 years ago. Um, started out uh, as trap help, uh, pulling and scoring for the shooters and making a little bit of money and it allowed us to shoot a little bit of trap with that money we were making. And um, I've been coming back ever since, uh, you know, occasionally on and off to shoot Lewis class targets for, for all these years. I've been involved with the club since I was about 12 years old. Um, I've been here a few years off and on. Took a few years off during college and such in my early working years, but uh, came back and um, worked behind the bar, as I still do to this day, so, and also serve as a treasurer on the board. Uh, I've been shooting here since 1990, when I first came over. I've been trap shooting for three years now, uh, four if you don't count being in the league. All. Uh, league trap shooting team shooters are considered members of the club. We have a board meeting basically once a month and members are encouraged to attend those. Uh, we don't get a lot of participation from our members so that kind of tells us that we must be doing something right, that people don't want to come and change a whole lot of stuff. But we are always open to suggestions of what we can improve. I usually shoot at another club in Winthrop but I actually like shooting here a little bit better because they're really friendly and it's an amazing clubhouse and they have all really good traps too. I, it's, trap is a, to me, is a, it's an individual team sport because you're shooting against yourself as an individual. But when you're on a team, you're shooting as a group of five for a total score of five. And it's that uh, sense of competition, a sense of accomplishment. When, you sh when the squad shoots it really good, it's a sense of accomplishment when I shoot good, when I have a good round. And it's, uh, it's hard to explain. It's, it's, uh, it's a rush. Trap shooting is like here. You have five stations and you rotate from each station. And then skeet. Skeet, there's like two houses, and there's a high house, a bird flies from here, and a low house, and a bird flies up, and you're at, there's eight different positions, so it's a little more challenging. We shoot once a week for trap, and then if you're in skeet shooting, then you shoot another one day a week. We shoot one round per night, and then we maybe shoot a couple practice. If we need to sub on another team, somebody might ask us to sub on another team. But uh, we like to, after we shoot, we like to sit out here and gossip. Yeah, we go out here and drink beer and, and tell stories and lies and pick on each other. And uh, like I say, it's just some of the guys I've been shooting with have been shooting with them for 25 years. So we know a lot about, we've gone through a lot of great things. We've gone through a lot of not so great things. And we've shared it. And it was just like I say, it's like a family. And uh, I've been shooting with them for so long, I really don't know if I could shoot with another team. It would take me a while to adjust because uh, we've, we've got a rhythm. Uh, we've got guys we pick on and we pick on each other. And like I say, we have a great time. It's just a fun, nice, relaxing evening. Well, this year we're uh, lucky enough to have our 50th anniversary. Um, so obviously we were founded in 1967, um, kind of by a, a group of local sportsmen um, that uh, they wanted 
another avenue for, for getting together and doing some things outdoors. Um, so yeah, we just had a local group and uh, it's, it's kind of flourished since there. We've, we've been the host to a number of events. We're not just a trap shooting club, but we host uh, um, firearm safety with the DNR um, for, for youth uh, in the area. Um, we also host three high school trap shooting teams. Um, in the past, we have done snowmobile training classes um, as well as some, some types of races out here. Um, we've been you know, providers for lots of different events that have been outdoor focused, so whether it's been uh, wood duck house building or um, projects to update the habitat in different areas. We've been uh, kind of focused uh, in a number of different areas. What, what most people know our club for is obviously our Wednesday night trap shooting. Um, we are a uh, open club to, uh, to outdoor shooters, not just uh, our members. We've got about 150 members, but we're also open to um, basically the public. Anybody that can come out and shoot trap on Wednesday nights. We're open from 6 to 9 o'clock on, on any Wednesday night, um, basically from the middle of April through the end of August. Oh, everybody's really friendly here. Even if you don't know them, you know, they're going to say hi to you or hi to you do tonight or a good atmosphere that way. The club, the, the club owns roughly 27 acres um, and uh, it's it's kind of a multitude of property if, if you've ever done a pan out here. We've got a couple of ponds, we've got some wildlife, then we've got our parking area and our clubhouse. But yes, all, in all we have about 27 total acres. It's a constant hotbed for, for wildlife. We'll, anytime you can come out here and um, you can see geese and ducks and pheasants and deer and there's uh, there's a number of different game that comes out along with our some of our uh, our gophers and rabbits and some of the little things that like to run around from time to time. We still shoot at night. We have four four of the five houses fields are lighted. It's a nice club. Uh, very few clubs have lights nowadays and this is one of the clubs that have lights. Uh, great, great people. Get along with everyone around here. Never had a problem. Just great people to come over with. Always enjoyed shooting over here. Good background. Uh, great targets. Uh, just have a good time over here. Good crew to shoot with. Always some good, built a lot of good friends. varies from year to year on the number of teams that we have. Um, typically on an average year it's somewhere from 25 to 30 um, trap teams that's that's participating in a, uh, a handicap league um, which is 18 weeks and then we have a number of individual shooters so um, this year we've got uh, three individual classes we've got one um, is a 16 yard individual uh, league we've got roughly 35 people shooting in that um, we also have a youth league, so it's you know people that are 18 years and under. Um, that is somewhere in the 15 um, members of the league, and then we have a 27-yard, uh, a young, a long yardage league as well, and that just has about a dozen shooters. We have about 25 league teams on Wednesday nights, and that seems to fluctuate from year to year. Um, so the big thing again is the high school shooting on the weekends. We have uh, roughly. 200, 225 kids from three different schools shooting here. Well, I shoot here, a league, so I have started three leagues around here, and then I shoot ATA, and then I shoot, now I start shooting AIM, that a lot of people, a lot of the young kids shoot, and I shoot for the high school track team. Uh, back in the late 70s, we had about 30 teams, 30 adult teams shooting. Uh, we shot two nights a week, both Wednesday and Thursday nights. We were open two nights to to handle it because we didn't have as many traps as we do today. I'm on Glencoe Silver Lake High School team. <laughs> I don't know the highest score that's ever been shot. The highest score that I've been involved with since I've been here was 123. And that happened to be from a, still an active club or an active group of ours, the, the Harms Bar team. It was a great, it was, I was last shooter on post five and actually at that time I never thought about it until we were done and the scorekeeper said all fives again. Everybody was a straight 25. That's the only time I've, I've been on a squad that shot 123. We shot 123s, 124s, but uh, 125 is uh, kind, of a, kind of a rarity. It's, that's, that's something when you do that, when you get 525s together. One of the things we offer is a 200 target uh, Lewis class league for, uh, for kids, 18 and under. 
Um, and if you're not familiar with Lewis class, it's basically every five entries wins. So it's not just one, two, three, four, it's one, six, 11, 16, that sort of thing. So it allows uh, maybe not the best scores to win a prize. Uh, it's good practice for the kids to come out and do that. Well, there's Lewis League, which is 300 singles, and then there are 27, yard, 27 yards, and there's uh, Youth Lewis, that are only 200 singles, I'm pretty sure. The competition in the Lewis League is uh, not quite the same as the competition in the, in the high school league. It's, in Lewis, it works kind of if, if, you shoot, if you shoot a certain average, like you'll get certain awards, so you don't have to be like the number one shooter on your team to get an award. So, uh, and you enter in, uh, you, you can enter in as many times as you want. You come out here on any Wednesday you want. You shoot a, at a total of 200 clay targets and hopefully you break them all. But uh, once, you, once you've done that, they'll, uh, what I believe they'll do is they'll take your uh, average score out of those 200 and then average it out, and then you get a prize based on whatever your average is. Uh, to expand on our handicap league, we do have it for a, a variety of shooting skills, really. It's a, as a team, you post a team score, you've got five members on a team, and you shoot a total of up to 125 targets. Um, and then based on your scores, um, you're classified based on averages and, and how well the team shoots. But uh, as part of the, the handicap league, we've got five classes. We've got a double A, an A, a B, a C, and a D. Um, and it really just it uh, goes by skill level and, and what the averages are. And then from week to week, um, the way that scores work out, we, we uh, tally them up for the class and then we move people you know, either closer or farther depending on what those scores were. Um, so it tries to make things evened out over the course of the season. I shot for a, a company called Lester's Incorporated, Lester Buildings, um, uh, back in the 70s with, with some other youth shooters from Lester Prairie. We we're the only kids team out here shooting with the adults. Uh, we, we hung right in there with those guys. We won a trophy, took their trophy, us, us little brats from, from the adult shooters one night. Uh, that was a highlight. And ever since then, um, I've now moved to uh, Eden Prairie. I'm an hour away, so I just come out here and shoot practice, as well as Lewis class targets with, with my son now, who's old enough to shoot. With being open for 50 years, we've, we've had a number of people that have come through and, and helped our club out. Um, not just adults, it's, it, to be perfectly honest, our Wednesday nights has been primarily um, high school aged help. Um, and they've made a, a huge impact as far as um, the way that we've run our club. Um, so it, it's kind of gone hand in hand with the fact that now we've got the established high school clubs, they, the, the shooters for the high school league do end up coming out and helping us out on our Wednesday nights or, or some of our other fun shoots. Um, but yes, it's, it's been primarily youth help for the longest time and it's, it's transi transitioned to a point where a lot of those youth have come, worked, went off to school, got jobs, and actually have come back with kids now and are, are kind of back involved with our club once again. So it's, it's very fun in that sense. So for most of the people, when the, the, the kids show up on a given night and um, what they're doing at the beginning of night uh, is that they're, um, they come out, get the trap house ready. Um, and what that means is you basically unlock the house, get the machine turned on, bring out our, our pullers. Our, we've got a voice pull system. Um, get the chair set up, the scorecards, uh, make sure that the trap is ready to run. And uh, then from that point on, the next few hours are just sitting outside in the, the beautiful Minnesota weather and uh, watching people shoot some trap. We always have time for more teams, um, and not just teams, individual shooters. For, for people that, uh, you know, maybe haven't shot trap for 25 years, or they, they'd like to just see what it's about. They're more than welcome to come out. We, can, we have open shooting for anybody. Um, but yes, we always welcome more teams as well. Basically, it started in the one section here, and it started out as just a warehouse, um, is where we housed everything, and it's it's kind of gone in four stages, I believe it is. So we've we've added a number of different times to the clubhouse itself. 
um, and now it's strictly a clubhouse. This is we don't house, we don't hold any type of stock of, of clays. We've actually got an uh, external um, shed for for keeping all of our other inventories. But, um, but yeah, now the clubhouse is open for rentals and obviously for large gatherings because we can hold a number of different people here. Well, we started out with one trap house, uh, then we went to two trap houses, uh, then we added. Um, I believe three more, which allowed us to throw um, tournament targets or, or ATA registered uh, shoot targets. Uh, we had very large uh, crowds that would come for those shoots. Um, and now it's transitioned over to more of a um, high school sport here at the club where there's hundreds of kids that are shooting craft here from three or four different high schools. And I believe I read in the uh, paper recently that it's now the second largest um, sport in the state of Minnesota next to uh, football, the number of kids that participate. And since it's a uh, co co ed sport, you can understand why. You'd be crazy not to shoot if you were in high school. I wish we had it when I was a kid. The thing that people have noticed when they've stepped into our clubhouse, and since we've been established for so long, is that when they step into the clubhouse itself, they've noticed how much brighter and nicer the inside of the club is, has become. So about five or six years ago, we did a, a renovation of the inside. We did the knotty pine walls. Um, we've done redone the carpeting and to make things a little bit of a nicer clubhouse. Um, and then from the outside standpoint, uh, we're running about 10 years now, we've put in um, pat traps, which is one of the top of the line pat er, um, trap styles for, for throwing quality targets out on the field. Um, we've also gone to a voice activated uh, um, throwing system which has is, is greatly improved some of the scores as well. And a sidewalk. And a sidewalk. This, uh, about a year ago we finished our sidewalk project with fencing. It was obviously a, it was a safety concern to make sure that we keep um, people who aren't participating in the active shooting stay back far enough to a, to a safe distance. So obviously safety was our main feature there. The changes I've seen, of course the clubhouse obviously has been changed. We've added the fence, new lights, new trap houses, new trap machines, and uh, like I said, just the place has uh, really been fixed up. From when I first come over here, it's fixed up a lot nicer now than it was 25 years ago. Well, the big thing has been the pat traps, the auto loading traps. It used to be we'd have to have a kid down in the house putting a target on each time, and now it's an auto loading um, machine. So it's a lot safer. You don't have someone down there for each each target thrown. Um, just have to go down after every four or five rounds and, and load them back up again. We had one person who would pull to release the target, and then we also had a scorekeeper. So there were three uh, kids working on each trap field at the time. The voice command is a little more consistent than they used to have kids pushing the button when you'd help holler pull, and it wasn't necessarily when you wanted it to go. And so this is a little more consistent. When there's a broken bird, the shooters got a little bit crabby, especially if they got a number of those. You know, they expected good targets all the time. And, uh, but they get over it quickly, they understood, but uh, yeah. Uh, lights came very early in the game. Those came probably in like the second or third year uh, the club was in existence, because we needed those to, to handle league shooting when we only had two traps. We were throwing white targets at night. Those showed up the best under the lights. I think now they shoot, throw orange targets uh, at all times. Uh, when we added the fourth and fifth traps and those light towers were added as well. In the last few years with the remodeling of the club and the, uh, the new trap houses, trap machines, some improvements on the grounds. And uh, a big one is the uh, high school trap shooting that's taken off over the last couple of years. Trap shooting was kind of a a dying sport. Um, you know, the high school shooting really gave it a shot in the arm lately. It's coming back. I've been doing this for probably 45, 50 years. And back when I started, you know, it was my grandfather, my dad, my siblings, and you didn't see high schoolers at all shooting. Now it's very competitive with them. I'm averaging about a 24.3 average out of 25. Uh, which isn't bad. Could do a lot, a little bit better. Uh, State high school, I didn't do very good this year, but next year will be different. So every time I shoot 25 straight, I get a patch, and if I keep on going, I get a hundred or a 75 or a 50 patch. See how far I can go. And this is how many I have right now. And I just keep.
keep on adding on my new towels. So I've shot here at Lester Prairie for three years. The last three years, I went, I started out in seventh grade here in Lester Prairie. I shot uh, up to junior varsity my first year, so I was very proud of myself for that. And then my second year, I was able to uh, keep an average of 21 or, or greater, so that put me on varsity. And I've been shooting an average of 21 to 22 ever since then. So both last year and this year, I, I was on varsity. As long as you know what you're doing, you're not gonna get hurt or anything. Like, they have the state shoot that they have every year, and they've had it going for, I think, seven, eight years now, and they have had not had any injuries at all so because the kids are smart and they know what they're doing <laughs> I think it's like important because so people aren't say afraid of guns like kind of normalize sports with guns it gets kids outdoors instead of behind the computers the phones the games I th getting the youth involved I worked with Bruce on the uh, high school trap league been coaching for about three years now, three years, yeah, three or four years. And it's fun to watch these kids come in and develop and become good shooters. And some of them are very good. And uh, what I, I like about it is it's getting these young people experience and they're able, on our group, school, every kid that joins the team or signs up for it is on the team. We do not, nobody gets cut. Nobody is benched because of their ability. Everybody is on the team contributing to the team. So, and it gives these young people who are not athletic an opportunity to participate in some kind of sport that they will know that they will be able to fully participate in from beginning to end. And it's, it's a sport that these young people can take with them through their life like if they're playing football, they may play football in high school and that's it. Trap shooting, we've got people here in their 80s that are shooting trap. So it's, it's just a nice, it's nice to see this group coming up and the participation just overwhelms me. And I scored for our kids out at Alec during their team shoot or their state shoot and I think I was more nervous than they were. I like it because there's not a bench even if you're not good enough, you can still shoot and work at it. Competition between other people, uh, older guys, because it's kind of fun beating them and showing them what I can do. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot of your time. Um, you can come when you please, especially with the current setup with Lewis class targets. So it's quite flexible. And um, I, I see great things with all these high school kids that are um, taking on the sport and it's a sport for life. You know, something you can do for, for many, many years unlike many other sports. Accomplishment if you do good, like if you're improving, you get to meet friends too. What I like most about trap shooting is probably the big social event that, that it is, especially when we come here. I have a lot of, I have some friends here, including adult friends here that I, that I like to hang out with and talk to and we're all very supportive of each other. And, and they've given me excellent guidance on how to get from shooting single digits to up to an average of like 20 is what I've been shooting. And eventually I was able to shoot 325s last year. And I was really happy about that. So I'd say the social aspect is the best part of trap shooting. We, we, we've got information on our website. Um, actually one of the um, most current locations that we, we do a lot more information through is our Facebook page, which we do have um, a number of different people that like the page, and that's where we send out constant reminders about um, events or weather or um, different things that are coming up that are pertinent to the club.